Kim Broombaugh, and you probably have a form with um, that has my name on it, um, either a DS-2019 or an I-20 with my signature. Um, I'm the Director of Visa Information and Support and Sevis Management. I'm going to talk to you about the main things to keep yourself in status. So if you listen to nothing else today, listen to this stuff, because this is why you can stay in the United States. Um, first thing is full-time continuous enrollment. All international students have to be enrolled full-time at all times during the quarter. Okay, For an F1 students, that's enrolled um, 12 hours for undergraduate students and 8 hours for grad students. Okay, There's no exception to that. You usually have to be enrolled full-time. If you can't be enrolled full-time for any reason, you need to come see me. There's um, particular reasons which you can be reduced course load, but you have to get that approved before you do it. So don't go ahead and drop classes or anything like that. Make sure you're enrolled at all times, full time. If there's a problem, come see me and we'll take care of it. Um, you must be registered by the end of the first week of classes. So by next Friday, a week from today, you have to be enrolled full time. That's when I pull my registration list. And again, just remember, it's 12 hours for undergrad students and 8 hours for grad students. Changes. You must notify the UCA, UCIE of any changes in your personal information, for instance, your name, if you get married or something like that, your academic status, if you change majors, you need to let us know, education level, for instance, if you go from bachelor's to master's or to PhD, you need to let us know and completion or termination of studies. If you end up not completing your program and just want to go home, you need to let us know. Change of status. If you would change from a student status to maybe a work status um, to an H status, you need to let us know. And also, if you're interested in transferring to another university, you need to let us know. Address. Most of you, when you checked in, logged in and um, put your uh, local address in Wings Express, you all always need to keep your local address updated. Um, you will not be registered in Sevis unless you have a local address. So anybody that hasn't updated their local address, Chinese students will put, probably do it this afternoon when you check in. But make sure you put your local address in. Your international address is already in there, and you're not able to change that through Wing. So if anybody would need to change their international address, you need to email me, and I'll update that for you. You cannot have post office boxes. It has to be your physical address where you live. So if you try to update it with the post office bo box, it will automatically will take it off and revert to your old address. So there's no post office boxes. Um, like I said, if you need to update your international address, you need to email me. And then please do not end your local address when you leave. They're not going to send you anything to your address in the United States, but don't end it because that screws up your SEVIS registration. Okay. Visa status related documents. It is your responsibility to keep all visa related documents current. For your I-20 or your DS-2019, you need to renew it at least a month prior to the expiration, and you would meet Steve to do that. And your passport, you need to renew six months prior to your expiration. For instance, if it comes to your expiration date of your passport and you want to work on campus or you need some kind of documentation from me, I can't do that because you have to have a valid passport to be in the United States. Okay, I just had a student last week that went to renew her work authorization and she let her passport expire. So now she can't work and it's going to take probably three months to get her passport um, renewed. So just make sure you keep all those documents up to date. Your bills. Part of your um, status here is to maintain student legal status, so that means paying your bills. You need to always register, keep your health insurance by um, paying your registration, and other school fees. So any fees, you need to make sure you keep those up to date. Working on campus. As Steve mentioned, um, international students can work on campus. You may not work over 20 hours per week and, and on any campus job. So if you have a job in the library and you also have a job in you know, engineering, you, it's a total of 20 hours. You cannot work over 20 hours. If you do work over 20 hours, it's a violation of your status. An international student may not work over 40 hours during breaks. So winter break, spring break, summer break, all those times you can work um, 40 hours of full-time work week. Um, and just remember, that's a combination of all jobs. 
working off campus. An international student cannot work off campus without prior authorization from me for CPT. I'll go through that a little bit in a, uh, more depth, but curricular practical training is CPT off campus, so working off campus, and it's, and it's related to your major. And that's only after nine months of full-time enrollment. Insurance, if you've enrolled already, you've noticed an insurance bill. Um, every international student is automatically billed Wright State Insurance, okay? If you have any questions, you need to go down to the Fred White Center, which is in the bottom of this building, and you need to, if you haven't done so already, submit your health forms by the first day of class. So by Monday, you need to have uh, submitted your health forms downstairs. Ask questions. Please, please, please do not take immigration advice from your friends. Saying, well, my friend told me this, or my friend did this, please come ask us. Um, we're the experts. We go to a lot of training to get the information for you. So um, get the correct answers from the UCIE. And don't make any important decisions without consulting the UCIE, such as leaving. Um, if you leave the country, that's okay. I mean, we're not gonna keep you here, but you have to do it the right way to make sure it's documented right in SEVIS. So if you ever wanna come back, then you're able to do so. Um, working off campus or on campus without work authorization, that's a violation of your status. So you could be terminated in SEVIS. So just don't make any important decisions without consulting someone in the UCIE. Um, there are no quick questions, so please don't stop us in the hall and say, oh, I have a quick question, because everything needs to be looked at. For instance, you know, every time you come in for an appointment, we'll have your folder, your file in front of us with all your immigration information. We'll be able to specifically look at your case and tell you the answers to your questions. Um, me personally, I like email, so I can answer an email quicker than you can make an appointment and get in to see me. I answer almost every email within a couple hours, if not that day. So you can always email me, um, but Steve likes appointments. He'd rather have you come in and make an appointment. So, um, and I'll tell you what we each do, because we each do specific things related to your status. Um, in regards to your WSU email, you are responsible for the information passed on to you through your WSU email account. Even if you don't want to use the Wright State email account, because it's nothing fancy, you know, like AOL or, or Google or anything, but you need to keep it, it monitored. If, if you don't want to use it, you can have it forwarded to your AOL or your Google account or whatever, but you are responsible for that information. Everything that comes from Wright State, meaning any bills, any registration information, anything that comes from our office is going to go to your Wright State account. So please make sure you check that account or have it, have it forward, forwarded to your home account. Okay, just to give you an update on um, what we do, International Student Scholar Services is broken up to uh, me, Steve, and Ruth. As Steve mentioned, Ruth is the Director of Admissions, so um, all of your admission letters pr probably came from Ruth. She also does new degrees, so if you would be changing from a bachelor's to a master's or to a PhD, you would talk to her about a new degree. And then um, she also does graduate degree changes. For instance, if you're going from electrical engineering to human factors engineering, you would talk to her. Um, I do travel requests, so anytime you wanna go home for a break or anything like that, you would submit a travel request, and I would sign the second page of your I-20 or the first page of your DS-2019 to travel. That allows you to get back into the United States. Um, work authorization, if you're working on campus, um, you would submit a work authorization form in the international office with a copy of the documentation for your work and I would give you that authorization. A reduced course load anytime you want to you need to be less than full time. I do that. Curricular practical training as I discussed before is working off campus in a job related to your major. I take care of that and that's only offered after nine months of continuous enrollment. Undergraduate change of major, um, anybody who's an undergraduate student, you can change majors just by doing it in the department, um, but it does uh, require us to change your I-20, so I do that. Uh, spouse dependent I-20s, if you would have a spouse or a um, child that you want to bring to the United States while you're studying, that can be done. Um, for the EMBA students, that would actually be Steve. Steve takes care of that, I don't. And then transfer out, if you're interested in going to another university, um, I would take care of that. 
Um, Steve does change of status. Actually, right now I'm doing it to help ease, but um, if you were changing into an F1 status, for instance, if, if a student came to the United States um, you know, as a, just a visitor and um, changed their mind and actually wanted to study, I would do that, change of status. Um, Steve does program extension, so anytime um, the ex expiration date on your, on your file form is expiring and you're not done with your program, you would need to see Steve for a program extension. OPT is optional practical training. That's the year-long um, training period you can work in the United States after your program of study. Steve takes care of OPT. Reinstatement, if you would go out of status, for instance, the things I talked about, I'm not being full-time, working illegally, any of those things, and you would be terminated in SEVIS, then you would have to do what is called a reinstatement. And that's $300, and that gets you back in status, okay? So that's something Steve takes care of. Short-term loans he takes care of. J-1 student and scholar advising, so any um, advising that the J-1 EMBA students need, you would see Steve about that. Um, I guess that's everything. Does anybody have any questions? Um, you can always come into the office or email us, but does anybody have any general questions right now that I can answer? Okay, thank you.